So, in terms of habitat that I spend my time in with these particular otters, um, it's a small farmland river. It's a tributary of the River Severn, which eventually goes to via another river. Um, it's in flood at the moment. Normally, it's only, I don't know, eight, ten feet wide in its widest places. Um, but at the moment, I'd say it's probably 18 feet wide. Um, as you can see, the, if you pick it up on video, but you can see there we've got a bank of weeds just over there with a bank of weeds nearer here. Oh, it's gone out of focus now. That's the main body of the water that runs down the center. The rest of this is flood at the moment. Normally down here, you can see there's a grassy bank underneath or there is um, silt in places. So we've got fallen trees into the river, which you can just see down there. So there are little places where they can get themselves up underneath the trunks of fallen trees to form a halt. The grasses that uh, join the summer, they stand quite tall, are great hiding places for the greyfish and for well, other little insects. They don't eat just fish. They'll also eat amphibians, um, the crayfish, small fish, large fish. Um, but uh, the diet consists mainly of water creatures, obviously. So they uh, root around quite a bit. I've seen them quite a lot moving around inside the grasses as if they're trying to disturb things within the grass to make it bolt or drop or fall. And then they'll appear with something in their mouth, um, which is a, a snack. But yeah, it's um, just a farmland river. Nothing too special. It just goes to show how otters are everywhere. They can be everywhere. We've got ourselves a nice, roughly grazed meadow. There's cattle in here over the summer months, but during the winter it stands empty. Um, I've also seen lots of activity along this river for kingfishers. Um, there's also a good population of moorhens, swan family. Um, there's water voles a little further up as well. And they all, so far, seem to be living in harmony with the otter that's here. You do hear some scare stories of where otters have wiped out entire populations of wildlife in parks. But in this natural environment, uh, it's a natural ecosystem where the otter is obviously an apex predator. Um, there is a natural balance of prey and predators. So I'm right by the riverbank again. Um, literally, well, right up the side of the river, it's in flood a little bit at the minute. I've just come across a, another sign that otters are active in the area. Now, uh, food, or leftover food, is always a good thing to look for. And uh, what we've got here is the remains of a crayfish. Not very fresh, quite dirty, and no meat left on there at all, so it looks like other bits of rotten there about to go at it as well. But you can clearly see there the remains of a, well, seaborne crayfish. Seems to be the most common thing I find on the riverbank. Is evidence that the otters are around. These little tussy pieces of grass actually in the river. They're always a good place to look for spraying, so otters kind to uh, use those quite frequently to just mark out their territory. Nothing on these in particular, but uh, always worth checking out too. Now, something else that's always worth checking is if you've got a log or a rock or a stone or anything that's out of the ordinary alongside the river. Um, otters tend to use these as territory markers. So, for example, just by the side of the river, we're not very far away from the river again, it's probably three foot, four foot. There's this big lump of sandstone. I'm not sure how it's got here or why it's here. Um, it's the only one along the river that I've seen. But on here, um, again, we can see a sprint. Now, this is a very old sprint. I know this has been here for at least four weeks. Um, so with the weather we've had over the last few days, it has washed away and there's not much left of it now. But I do know that was an otter sprint a few weeks ago. So it's always worth checking these sort of things and just looking for what may have appeared to look like just a piece of mud now. You can still see a kind of a stain around it, which definitely was a sprain, um, which has been washed away by the rain a little bit now. But again, just have a look at the riverbank, check anything that's out of the ordinary. Um, again, just a sandstone piece of rock that's sat by the side of the river. Uh, an otter is used to mark his territory. Now, I'm not too sure if you've got to make this out on video, but what we appear to have here is an area of flattened grass where I'm assuming an otter has actually been out. You can see the area and had a good lie down and roll around. And in fact, if you have a look, it's a nice little sprint and also a nice little slide. Straight back down into the river. And in fact, another sprint there as well. This path then, not 
I'm sure you'll see it on the video. Goes all the way back across. To the other side. Where you can see again. There's a slide. Down into the river. This is a shortcut. Good sound meander. Out again. This is something else that I have read that otters do. Now I'm not convinced that this is otters, it may be badgers. But we are again relatively close to the riverbank. These have only appeared here in the last few weeks. Um, I haven't seen badger activity in this area before, so it could be the otters. These areas of um, scraped surface of the grass. Now in this particular area, there are a few. Now I have read that otters will scrape at the grass to turn over the roots of the turf, um, and they eat nutrients from out of the roots of the grass. Now you can see how close I get out to the other side. There is five in this area, all again relatively close to the riverbank. They are all in a relatively close area to each other. And it is literally a scraping just where the grass has been taken off the surface. Uh, could be evidence of otters. And again, I'm not 100% convinced because I know badgers do like to dig and look for worms and tasty morsels.